What's up, y'all? This is Ty. I am here to review season three, episode 12 of All the Queen's Men. Mm, 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 mm. That's me stripping. Because <laughs> y'all know I'm one of the, the newest dancers of Eden, right? I'm going to be on season four, right? That's 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 who I'm going <laughs> to I'm joking, but am I? Maybe, listen, maybe I'm speaking into existence. Anyway, I'm here to review... Season 3, episode 12 of All the Queen's Men, which airs on BET+. Plus. The episode is titled The Crossroads. But before I get into that, I got to give a shout out to my lovely subscribers. Y'all hold me down in the comment section. And I'm so grateful to y'all because I remember when I had five subscribers. And I was coming on here entertaining five subscribers. And I should say thank you, all five of you. Then it became six now we had a thousand something, thousand something, 200, something like that, a thousand, 200, something like that. And I know it's going to continue to go and grow. So I thank y'all. I appreciate y'all because y'all did that. Y'all did that. So shout outs to Miss Lavender. Shout outs to No Limit P504, which remind me of that song, We the 504 Boys. We the 504. I hope I'm not making that up. I swear I remember that song. I think that was Master P. We the 504 boys or somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. June BLC, Maka or Maka, the review queen. Tay Tay and Karima Khadija and all the rest of you wonderful, lovely people. I do appreciate you. But those, I had to shout those folks out because they left comments on the last review of all the Queen's men. They're watching this show with me. Now let's get down to this review. Madame has been arrested, but the madam just went in that precinct like a revolving door, just like that. Say, my, what was even the point of her even going in this? In not even five minutes, she's out. And the DA was pissed off because what happened is Carla dropped the charges. So they had to let her go. And the DA was like, you know what? Somebody, um, something's going to stick to you eventually. She said, you mean the way nothing sticks to your skinny ass? I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was hilarious. Um, Madam comes out like the Teflon Don that she is. She's like, I'm Teflon, nothing touches me. Midnight was like, damn, Madam, how you get out so fast? It's been, I'll be in there forever. She's like, I'm what can I say? I'm untouchable. She's like, she tells Tommy and Blue, she says, listen, y'all call her dropping charges. Y'all find her because something's up. She's up to something. Meanwhile, Babyface is being a bomb, and he's like, oh, can I stay with you tonight, bro? How do you live like that? Can I stay with you tonight, bro? Can I stay? Why this dude don't have a place to stay? Why can't he find a place? As cocky as he is, he's not smart enough to get his own place? You're making enough money. Well, damn, how much? What are they giving you? What are they paying you that you, you got to do this? Don't you? He also does the... The, the VIP room and, you, get, you know, you're prostituting yourself out there. Why don't he have enough money or is he just cheap or is he on drugs? What is he doing with his money that he can't get his own place? Somebody help me with that. And has he not learned anything from the Miss Patty situation? Why would you still put yourself through this? So now he go easing on down to Miss Tandy and now he at Miss Tandy house pandering to Miss Tandy and, Oh, I'm not going to be cocky. I'm going to do anything for a hot meal and a, a, a hot meal and a cot, huh? You know? So he laying up, giving it to her. And, you know, her husband is um, in the hospital still. And she's like, well, you can stay here as long as my husband is, until my husband gets out or whatever. And so now he's bragging about that. Yeah, man, I got me a new one. And this is five-star treatment. I got her wrapped around my finger. Like, he's just a bum. He's just a user, a manipulator. I got a new benefactor. And one of them said to him, until it fail, falls, until it fails, you're going to F that up too. And I'm like, it's a matter of time before he Fs that up. Because when you in somebody's house like that, first of all, I couldn't do nothing like that. Even though... I do like I did like that five star treatment at Miss Tandy's house. I ain't built like that. I can't have, I can't live off nobody. No, I can't. I just I'm independent like that. Can't live off nobody. I just it just rubs me wrong. So I I don't know. But some people are wired like that. But this is a TV character, Ty. So why are you making it about you? I know, I know, right? But anyway, 
he's just a hobo. He's a hobo. That's it, hobo sexual. Like, dude, what are you doing? You got a job. Go get your own place. Have you learned nothing? The answer is no, he hasn't learned anything. Meanwhile, we see um, Detective Davis being pathetic and desperate at Doc's. And Doc is telling her, listen, you got to go. She's like, I thought we'd be able to get some morning loving in or whatever. He's like, nah, nah. She's playing herself, but she wants to be in Madam's good graces. She gives him a tip about the concierge. And, of course, he tells Madam about that. And I'm like, just pathetic, just pathetic. Madam's talking her any old kind of way, and she's just desperate. But, listen, desperate times call for desperate measures, right? That's what it's all about. And then we see Tommy getting scolded by Madam. She says, you've been messing up. You messed up on this Casanova thing, this Casanova um, Big D thing. And keep it up. You're going to get demoted. You're going to be back down to eating coochie and making breakfast and being the janitor. <laughs> That's not a bad job. <laughs> That's not a bad job. That's not a bad job. I look rough today, y'all, but that's okay. I'm going to the barber. I should have went to the barber first, right? And got all this taken care of before I came on camera. But listen, we're we going to do what it, it is what it is. That ain't, it ain't about me. It's about the review, right? So anyway, where, where was I? Then we have El Frego or El Fago. Fago. Am I saying that right? El Frego. El Fago. Fuego. Damn, what's wrong with me today? He is playing Captain Save-A-Hole and decides to rescue Big D from the dungeon. And I'm like, oh, my. I'm yelling at the TV. You're stupid. You're going to get killed. Why would you do that, son? Why would you do? What's wrong with you? But listen, that's what makes for good TV when people do stuff that piss you off and make you react like that. Because I was like. Is he stupid? But listen, he doing listen, he doing what he feels he gotta do, right? I'm like, oh my god, you can't be, you gotta be kidding me. So he's doing the right thing. There's too much killing going around here. But then you want to still stick around after that? And I'm like, El Fuego, what are you doing? He takes Big D to his house, and then Big D, Big D, instead of you fleeing, Big D's like, you know what? First he calls Casanova. Casanova says. Sorry, can't help you, which was real messed up. How you can't help me and you're an officer and I was an informant? Nah, you on your own now. We ain't got the resources for it. You on your own. What? What? That was stupid. That was really stupid. So now he decides, well, you know what? I'm going to go to mad on myself. And I'm like, oh, God. Everybody's stupid. Why would you do that? That sounds like a death sentence. That's what I'm thinking. So then we move on down to the funeral for Madam's father, who really ain't dead, and <clears throat> everybody's sucking up to Madam and trying to get in her good graces and sending their condolences, this and that. Third. She totally ignored trouble, and even um, Champ was like, damn, she ignored you. And here she meets her sister at the funeral. Carla is there in a wheelchair. She got a neck brace. You were stabbed in the chest, sweetheart. Why you got a neck brace? She's in a wheelchair. <laughs> Neck brace on. Their conversation was entertaining. She basically said, listen, I know daddy's alive, but why y'all tell me at the last minute? Y'all should have told me. I'm part of this family too. And um, Madam was like, don't you mess this up. Shut up. And then she says to Madam, she wants to partner with her. And Madam was like, hell no. And she's like, no, we sisters, we could do this. I want, we could do this. We could work with each other. I have to agree with Carla. I think that would be a good team because I actually like the character of Carla and I like that actress that plays Carla. I think her name is Cristal or something like that. They should give her, I want more screen time for Carla and I want Carla on the, in the team. I want her to be a part of the team, acting a fool because I love that character. Then, of course, in true Carla fashion, she gets up. Now, remember, she was just in the wheelchair. Now she's standing up. Oh, Lord, my father, this and that, and something about her sister's business and carrying on, where Blue was like, you want me to get rid of her? You want me to do something? She said, you know, when this is over, we'll wheel her up out of here. But then Madam just has this gut feeling that something is wrong, and she's correct, because in comes the helicopter, or maybe helicopters, I don't know, but you see, you hear it, 
and they're getting shot at by helicopters and shot, disrespected the damn urn and shot the urn up, shooting at everybody. And you see everybody reaching for their guns and everybody shooting up at the helicopter. Nobody was hurt. <laughs> Nobody's hurt. Bullets are come raining down on y'all and nobody got hurt. Nobody. Okay. Okay, no authorities called or nothing. Just a sh shot up a whole funeral with helicopters and nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Okay. Uh, El Fuego gets a visit from the DA. The DA is trying to convince him. El Fuego is like, no, I'm not going to do it. No, thank you. Trouble goes to, the, we're back at Cup Eden now. Trouble goes to, um, oh, I skipped something. While at the funeral, Aunt tries to talk to Dime. Dime says, this is not the time or place. He said, I'm not going to be wilding out no more. I agree with her. This ain't the time and place for that. Can we Can we do that somewhere else? We had a funeral. We ain't got time for that. So now back at Club Eden, Trouble is in the office of Madam. And Madam pretty much tells her, you know, you lied. You put my name in some stuff. I didn't like that. And because of that, you know, we ain't going to hurt you right now. But because of that, I'm taking your money. When you tip out today, you ain't going to have nothing. You just give me your whole thing. No money for you. So that happens to her. Then comes Casanova in there, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. They're going to kill this dude. But he gives his plea. says, listen, I was just doing a favor for this dude because he did me a favor. But I learned my lesson because he left me high and dry. He left me, fed me out to the dog. She said, I guess we the dogs, huh? And then he's like stating his case. And she says, you know what? You brave coming back here. I thought it was a stupid move, personally. She said, but you know what? You could keep, he said, can I keep my job here? She says, yes. But now he's been demoted to an amateur dancer. So he can't dance with the big boys no more. So I guess Babyface will be happy about that. Meanwhile, what else is going on at the club? Uh, after the guys do their little routine, whatever they was doing, um, Babyface is told that someone is in VIP for him. It's Miss Tandy. And we find out that her husband, Jack, has passed away. So that is a jackpot for um, Babyface. And Miss Tandy's like, I just need to be made to feel good right now. So now, you know, he's, he's going to be in there like swimwear with her until he screws that up. And then we get to our final scene. And that's the police coming in. While the guys are up there dancing and doing their routine, whatever. And the police are looking for trouble and champ. Because Jack is dead. So they're charging them with the murder of Jack. And that makes Rayshawn a, a murderer. But Rayshawn ain't here. Rayshawn went back to Alabama or wherever he was from. So that is how the episode ended. Tell me your thoughts. Did you like this episode? Did you like what went on? I it was all right. It was all right. It wasn't too bad, but I some things I was like, mm, I didn't like moves that were made. I didn't like El Fuego taking what's name out of the dungeon. I thought that was stupid. I just a lot of moves. I was like, that's that's what we doing. I don't know. I just I just didn't like that. But um, tell me your thoughts. Did you like this episode? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? That's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And check out my other videos. Check out my 2B Tuesdays. Check out my review of Raising Canaan. Check out my review of Tyler Perry's The Oval. And there should be some more things coming. I think I'm going to bring back the, the fitness challenge thing as I try to get all this together. You know what I'm saying? But that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.